Here we are at the school I work at daily. The school is IS-68, a junior high school that services grades 6 through 8 in Canarsie, Brooklyn. For the second part of my student teaching rotation, I have been working with a veteran social studies teacher. Her name is Helene Lopez, and she has been teaching for over 25 years. The grades she works with are 6th and 7th grades. One small group she teaches is composed of 6th grade English language learners. Another small group is made up of 7th grade students, also English language learners. All of these students predominantly come from Haiti, Yemen, Sudan, and Pakistan. Her class is on the first floor of our building. This is room 115. As you walk in the room, it is very bright and cheery, very colorful, okay? The colors stand out. The first thing that you see is the arrangement of the student desks. The teacher has chosen two large E's that are on both sides of the room. Many teachers choose this arrangement due to the large amount of students in each class. It provides space to eliminate constant talking, but also allows partner work and turn in talks due to the proximity of the desks. It also looks neat and orderly. There are several closet bulletin boards. The first provides information about the school, the rules, the time for classes, things that are happening, so the students can easily reference that information. On the other boards, there is an activity that students completed, probably sometime in the beginning of the year, that contains some personal information about such things as what they like and what they don't like. And this is a good activity because then the teacher and her fellow students can get to know each other. They even included some kind of cute baby pictures. In the back of the room, there are some random posters that are not related to each other, but are about the subject of social studies. These subjects of the posters are, as you can see, the United States presidents. Then there's one that says geography terms. And then there's another one that's kind of, it says the world, and it's a map of the world. And it um, identifies the continents. Perhaps this space could be used for a different purpose. In the back of the room, there is the teacher displays pictures and information about the lives of famous African Americans to acknowledge and celebrate their achievements. There is also a social studies word wall that the students may access the words if they need to know a definition. There is two classroom libraries, one for the sixth grade, one for the seventh grade. Um, they contain books for both grade levels that coordinate with the curriculum. So for the seventh grade, there are books about historical events that happened in the United States but it's also different books about the states in addition to that. For the sixth grade, there are books about countries that they have learned about, like India, China, and Peru. There are two cent student centers. One is to build upon the word wall and to make it more interactive. The other is related to the library, which is a nonfiction book investigation of the features of a text. There are many very neatly written 
ha handwritten posters on all sides of the room. Some explain social studies skills, such as KWL chart, summarizing, compare and contrast. Others on this side give very, a lot of details about the seven habits of successful teens. This is an ideal that we try to relate to our students to help improve student decision making and influence their behavior. What I have noticed is that these posters are full of words. This can be a bit overwhelming, especially for English language learners. Some visual additions may make those posters less intimidating or confusing. As you can see, there's a limited amount of technology. There is only one computer and it's at the back of the room and one printer, okay? So it doesn't really lend to doing any kind of computer work or research with the class. There is a smart board that does not work interactively. It serves as more like a screen than for a separate, with a separate projector. So the projector up top doesn't even work. She has to have a separate one. So it's not interactive at all. And we know that sometimes when, uh, during a lesson, if you find a particular activity, the L's could benefit from that type of interaction. The materials used is a textbook. It's an older textbook. It's called the Eastern Hemisphere. Okay? There's two different parts, part A and part B. Um, it does have many visuals, as you can see. Okay? It has um, visuals. It has um, things to think about. It has um, identifiable subheadings. It has... Um, It has vocabulary words that are highlighted. Um, it's, it's a nice looking text, uh, textbook, um, but um, it's funny, after taking Dr. Karinga's class and analyzed the pieces of this, this particular text, it was discovered that it can be linguistically challenging to students learning a new language, um, although it appears to be fairly simple. In the teacher's edition, it does have different features to help um, differentiate for L's, but I find that these are for the higher proficiency L's, not for all of our population. Um, I have some recommendations or ideas that I'd like to share with the teacher, okay? Um, the presence of more visuals that have to do with the lessons that she teaches, and maybe um, some realia uh, to incorporate into the learning. For example, if they are learning about a globe, a globe should be present, or even if they're learning maps, they should actually have a map that they can manipulate. <clears throat> um, another thing I would recommend is some celebrations of student work um, that they have done throughout the year. Um, there really doesn't seem to be a place where student work is shown or celebrated. Um, an, another um, recommendation would be more technology, but of course that can not always be helped. I know sometimes she's able to um, bring in a cart and use um, <clears throat> and use um, individual laptops. Okay, so this is my second video. Okay, and um, that's it. That's the end. Thank you.